You're listening to Sean Kelly Reviews, a presentation of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. Now here is your host, Sean Kelly. Hello and welcome to the once again rebranded Sean Kelly on Movies podcast and this is Sean Kelly Reviews. As you can probably guess, this will be just me giving reviews for um, recent release and um, uh, this will be a separate series from Sean Kelly Interviews which will still post in the same podcast feed. I'll probably have a new episode of that in a few weeks and I'm going to go right into this week's reviews which will be um, Alex Garland's Annihilation as well as the um, Netflix film Mute directed by Duncan Jones. So let's get started shall we? Can you describe its form? No. Start from the beginning. What do you think I do when you're away? You think I'm out in the garden, pining, looking up at the sky? (laughs) Why aren't you here? I gotta leave a day early. Here. Let me see him. He's extremely ill. You have to tell me where he was, what he was doing. It was his decision to go in. It's something they termed the shimmer. We've sent in drones and teams of people, but nothing comes back. But something has. You're a biologist. You served in the military. If I knew what happened, I could save his life. The boundary's getting bigger, it's expanding. We're talking cities, states. You need to know what's inside. So do I. It's beautiful. Check this out. It's like they're stuck in a continuous mutation. Anything interesting in there? No. Sharks have teeth like that. It's not possible. You can't crossbreed different species. What is it? The soldiers on the last expedition. They went crazy. Or something in here killed them. Something's come through the fence. Through the fence? (laughs) We have to go back. I can't go back. We can camp here tonight. destroying everything. It's not destroying. It's making something new. A team of scientists investigate an environmental phenomenon known as the Shimmer in Annihilation. After being MIA for nearly a year, biologist Lena, played by Natalie Portman, is shocked by the sudden return of her soldier husband Kane, played by Oscar Isaac, who quickly falls gravely ill. Lena is taken to a government facility where psychologist Dr. Ventress, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, explains that Kane was the sole survivor of a team surveying an environmental disaster zone known as the Shimmer, which has been steadily growing over the last three years. Desperate to know what happened to her husband, Lena joins Ventress and a team of anthropologist Anya, played by Gina Rodriguez, surveyor Josie, played by Tessa Thompson, and linguist Kaz, played by Tuva Novotny, as they head into the Shimmer to locate its source. So, Annihilation is the um, second film from director Alex Garland, uh, and is the follow-up to his debut Ex Machina, and um, this film is based on the 2014 novel by Jeff Vandermeer. Uh, The story follows a team of five women who investigate an environmental phenomena that has been steadily growing. It quickly becomes apparent that the plants and animals within the Shimmer are subject to crossbreeding mutations. The question that is on the mind of Dr. Ventress and her team is whether Kane's team was a victim 
victim of these crossbred creatures, or if they merely went crazy. One thing that is quickly apparent about Annihilation is that it is a film that is hard to categorize into a single genre. Ultimately, the film is a science fiction story, which progressively gets weirder and more psychedelic as it progresses. However, there are also some elements of horror within the narrative, particularly in the form of attacks by the crossbred creatures, as well as some grisly found footage video recorded by the previous team. In many ways, Annihilation is probably more comparable to Danny Boyle's Sunshine, which was written by Alex Garland, than Garland's excellent directorial debut, Ex Machina, which probably benefited more by having a very small cast. Structurally, the entire story of Annihilation is told in flashback as Natalie Portman's character of Lena is being interrogated by a scientist, played by Benedict Wong, about what happened on the expedition. Going in with the knowledge that Lena is the sole survivor does remove some of the tension, but there is also the question of how reliable a narrator Lena is. Lena's relationship with her husband Kane is explored through her memories, in which it becomes quickly apparent that the marriage might not have been as happy as it was initially believed to be. Probably the biggest takeaway I have from Annihilation is the film's production design, which builds up to a very weird and psychedelic climax. I think it's safe to assume that Annihilation is a film that would polarize viewers, especially those expecting a more straightforward genre film. While I do believe Annihilation to be not as excellent as Ex Machina was, I still ultimately enjoyed the film and I recommend trying to see this one on the big screen as opposed to um, Netflix, which um, the film is being released internationally on. So uh, I give Annihilation 4 out of 5 stars, which means I liked it. Now it is time to move on to my second review of this podcast. Do you know what it is to make your dreams come true, Leo? I've seen you working downstairs. You're a good man. This barman should not punch the fucking customers. I don't deserve you, Leo. I love you so much, but you don't know me. I want to know what the deal is with this crazy bartender. Sure you want our help with this? This kind of thing hurts my reputation. Daddy's gotta go. Oh, no soda. Your girlfriend has secrets. You lost me. Take a hint and fuck off. Very talkative. <laughs> Something's going on. You need to maintain a sense of humor, babe. You gonna give me some uh, trouble, big boy? Or are you gonna channel that famous Amish serenity? <laughs> gonna stop right now. It ain't a secret anymore. Would you do anything for her? Say you're sorry. Fucking say it! Why the hell can't he talk? He doesn't need words. bartender who cannot speak tracks down his girlfriend in the underworld of Berlin in mute. Leo, played by Alexander Skarsgård, is a man who lost the ability to speak after a childhood accident. Uh, Leo works at a bartender along with his waitress girlfriend, Adira, who mysteriously disappears without a trace, and a concerned Leo tries to track her down in the underworld of a futuristic Berlin. During his search, Leo crosses paths with uh, American surgeon Cactus Bill, played by Paul Rudd, who is looking to secure passage for himself and his daughter back to the United States, and uh, Cactus Bill is usually hanging out with his friend Duck, who is played by Justin Theroux. After taking a detour with Warcraft, Duncan Jones has returned with the sci-fi and war film Mute, Uh, which is a film that he has been developing for well over a decade. Mute has always been described by Jones as a spiritual sequel to his excellent 2009 debut film, Moon, 
though the connection turns out to be little more than a brief cameo in the film showing that Mute is taking place within the same universe. In fact, uh, Mute is almost the opposite of the very intimate and isolated moon, with the film taking heavy inspiration from Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. The story of the film is built around a silent performance by Alexander Skarsgård as Leo, who is the de facto gumshoe of this very noir-like mystery that has Leo searching for his missing girlfriend, Nadira. Leo's only leads are the interactions Nadira made on the final night he saw her, as well as cryptic messages that show up on the phone that she gifted him. However, a common element arises as Leo keeps crossing paths with unhinged American surgeon turned henchman Cactus Bill, who is desperate to leave Berlin as soon as possible. Uh, Previously known only as the son of David Bowie, who this film has a dedication to, Duncan Jones really hit it out out of the park with his debut feature, Moon, which has quickly followed up with by 2011's equally well done source code. Jones's career took a bit of a divergence when he was brought on to direct the better than it should have been adaptation of the video game Warcraft. In that regard, Mute should be viewed as a return to form for Duncan Jones, especially since it has a story that he has been trying to get made even before Moon. However, even though the end result is a pretty solid film, Mute is now without some major issues. Mute is at its best when it follows Leo's solemn search for Nadira, which leads him to a number of sleazy underworld locations. However, there is then the scenes between the hot-headed cactus Bill and the possibly perverted duck, which seems like they are part of a completely different film. Part of this comes from how both Paul Rudd, sporting a mighty mustache, and Justin Furu um, seem somewhat miscast in their roles. In fact, it isn't until quite late when their role in the film as a whole becomes more apparent. I wouldn't exactly say that Mute is a misstep for Duncan Jones, but... For a film that has been in development to hell for so long, it is a shame that the final product wasn't at the quality that it could have been. So, uh, Mute is uh, playing now on Netflix, and I give it three and a half stars, or rating of fair. And that is all for this episode of Sean Kelly Reviews. I will see you next time. Sean Kelly Reviews is a production of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. The music is Out of the Fog from the website podsummit.com. You can support Sean Kelly by going to patreon.com slash skonmovies. You can read Sean Kelly's writing at www.skonmovies.com.